the world is swept away. We chant that regularly. It's meant to remind us that we have to look inside if we're going to find anything that's solid and dependable. Because the world outside keeps just falling away, falling away. New things come up and they fall away too. What are you going to depend on outside? If your happiness relies on things outside being a certain way, it means your happiness is out of your control. And some people accept that idea and then just try to negotiate as best they can. Well, their negotiation is an attempt to exert some control, but it's pretty futile. If you could also try to exert some control inside, because that's where there's something potentially solid, something you can depend on. When they talk about having conviction in the Buddha's awakening, this is what the conviction is, is there's something solid inside the mind that can be touched at the mind, that really is dependable. It's a happiness without any boundaries and without any constrictions. It's a freedom that can be touched inside, and it can be found by human effort. So we train our minds so we can find that, and we keep digging down inside. I was talking today to someone who was saying, how do, how do I approach meditation with the idea that I'm going to embrace not-self? They said, you don't embrace not-self. You look down in the mind and see wherever there's disturbance. If there's anything that's obviously unskillful, you ask yourself, why am I thinking this? It takes effort to think thoughts. Here I'm thinking thoughts that are going to be destructive. Why am I thinking them? Why am I wasting that effort? And you learn how to not identify with those thoughts. Okay, that's not self. You use that as a tool. You're not coming to trying to come to the conclusion there is no self. You're using the idea that you have the choice of what you're going to identify with. So identify with things that are skillful. And then try to identify with things that are more and more skillful, so that your idea of skillful gets more refined. Anything that's skillful but not as skillful to the ultimate degree, you let that go. That was the secret to the Buddha's awakening. We should have conviction in that principle, too. As he said, he didn't let himself rest content with skillful qualities. If there was more skill to be developed, he wanted to find it. So look inside. To what extent can you control your own mind? It is possible to exert control here. And it's possible to find something that doesn't need to be controlled because it's totally solid. There is that possibility in life. It's a challenge, but it's a good challenge. And the qualities of mind you develop in accepting the challenge or testing the challenge are good qualities, regardless of whether the challenge turns out to be false. Mindfulness, alertness, ardency, these are good things for developing something good inside the mind, regardless. So as I say, the path is good in the beginning, good in the middle, good in the end. You can see the beginnings are good, and as you get into the path you see the, end, the middle is good. And when you finally get to the end, you say, oh yeah, the end really was worth it. And then when the world gets swept away, you don't get swept away with it. So keep looking inside. Anything that's unskillful, let, let it go. You don't have to carry it around. And as your taste gets more and more refined, you keep letting go, letting go. The question is what we have left, will there be the ultimate happiness? But at that point, you don't need to have anything, because the happiness is just there. 